Good evening and thank you for keeping your channel here on Wazo TV. And if you just joined us online on Facebook or YouTube via our handles at Wazo TV, we are grateful for your continuous patronage. My name is Stan Dobe and I'm happy to welcome you to your favorite Monday evening conversation, Wazo TV Insights. Tonight, our topic is cyberbullying, why you must stop. There are many definitions of cyberbullying, but let me share this one from UNICEF, which says, cyberbullying is bullying with the use of digital technologies. It can take place on social media, messaging platforms, gaming platforms, and mobile phones. It is repeated behavior aimed at scaring, angering, or shaming those who are targeted. In a nutshell, that's cyberbullying. But what are some of the examples of cyberbullying? One, spreading lies about or posting embarrassing photos or videos of someone on social media. Two, sending hateful, abusive, or threatening messages, images, or videos via messaging platforms. Three, impersonating someone and sending mean messages to others on their behalf or through fake accounts. Face-to-face -face bullying and cyberbullying can often happen alongside each other. But cyberbullying leaves a digital footprint, a record that can prove useful and provide evidence to help stop the abuse. The various examples of cyberbullying I just shared are outrightly unnecessary and should not be encouraged, but rather always condemned. Have you been cyberbullied before? Or do you know anyone who has ever been cyberbullied? Or have you observed the cyberbullying of anybody? And what was your reaction when you observed that? What was this? And your insightful contributions to the matter. We'll take some messages now, and when we get back, we will start the conversation. <music> To sugar free, freshly squeezed fruit juice, choose Greenline fruit juice and smoothies filled with vitamin C, calcium, iron, fiber, and zinc. Every drop of Greenline juice and smoothies is naturally made to give you energy, good health, and refreshment. Enjoy your favorite Greenline orange, pineapple passion, watermelon, pineapple and turmeric. Pineapple beetroot, pineapple and ginger, and healthy green. Green line fruit juice and smoothies, powered by nature. Embarrassed. Too embarrassed to speak to a loved one. Too embarrassed to speak to your doctor. Too embarrassed. When in our lifetime, one in four black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in 12 black men will die from prostate cancer. Let me repeat that. One in four black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in 12 black men will die from prostate cancer disease. One in 12. That could be your dad, even your older brother, uncle or grandfather. You need to make sure they are not embarrassed to speak to you or their doctor about it. Hey, Dad, have you had your prostate checked out? See, how hard is that? It's easy. Just start the conversation. Prostate cancer is survivable if caught and treated early enough. Don't let embarrassment stop you having this important conversation. You may save someone's life not just your own. From the Lenclay Sports Stadium to the Santiago Bernabeu, from the Boca Marina 
to the Madison Square Gardens. We would make sure that you do not miss out on all the scoop, the kicks, and all the flicks in the world of sports, from association football, to boxing, to hockey, to tennis. We make sure that we bring the action to you right in your home. And for our punters out there as well, we have something very special for you in the Investors Corner. Join me on Wazer TV every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for Ghana's number one sports post-mortem show, The Arena. My name is Kosi Fiaka, and I would be your host. Welcome back from the break. This is Wizard TV Insights. Tonight we are having a conversation on cyber bullying. Why you must stop it if you are one of those people who engages in it. Have you ever experienced rude humor, embarrassing posts, threatening comments, insults, etc. on your social media handles? We have all, one way or the other, as internet users suffered an unwanted share of abuse on the internet. I have been a victim of cyberbullying in various forms, but unlike other victims who are adversely affected by it, of course, I have developed quite a rather tough skin for such nuisance. And you do it on any of my pages or my walls at your own peril. Social media has come to be some sort of an escape from our daily frustrations. It offers us the opportunity to meet new friends, voice out our concerns, and interact with like-minded people. To many people, social media is supposed to be a fun platform where all friends, in quotes, joke around with each other. But sometimes it is hard to tell if someone is just having fun or trying to hurt you. In this digital era, cyberbullying has become a never-ending societal issue. And the most popular social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are common, are common grounds for online bullying. Tonight, we are saying on Wizard TV Insights that you must stop cyberbullying if it is something you do and think that it is fun. Joining us tonight are Samuel Odoi Laye. He is an entrepreneur and adjunct lecturer at the School of Technology, Gimpa, here in Accra. He is chief executive of Desiderata Information Systems Limited, a company that provides cloud services. Sami consults for a number of local and international companies and is a certified data center engineer and project management practitioner. What does he have to say about cyberbullying? Sami says, quote, to reduce the menace of cyberbullying, we need a change in mindset and build a strong self-esteem. We must teach our youngsters, in particular, to think before they post. We must all understand that the solutions that got us here will not be enough to move this generation to the next level, unquote. Sami, you are welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Mr. Jose. Our second guest is... Paddy Wanda, a cyber security expert with extensive experience in academic technology, banking, and the finance sectors. He currently works as an applications developer, infrastructure consultant, and a course instructor. Paddy has software security skills with proficiency in the engineering and integration of security practices into each phase of the software development life cycle. He has worked previously as an IT examiner and webmaster at our own Bank of Ghana, and now works as an IT and cyber examiner with one of the United States of America's financial sector regulatory agencies. And what does Paddy have to say about cyberbullying? He says, quote, you could be the first line of defense against cyberbullying if you are ever worried about your online safety. Report promptly to the law enforcement agencies. Paddy, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, so those are our um, 
conversationist for tonight. You're welcome to, as always, share your very exciting views, comments, questions. Send them to us. WhatsApp number 055-269-7939 or email us at TV at wazergroup.com. And once again, my name is Stan Dobie. So, gentlemen, you are, you are, you are welcome. And um, as, as I've uh, broadly put out, cyberbullying has become one of the negative effects of um, you know, the, the increasing social media interactions that, that we have. And True. we all observe it either one way or the other. Yeah. But I'll leave the practical issues to later and deal with some technical mm. and uh, you know, uh, social impacts of, of, of this bullying. And um, um, ask first, you know, Paddy, that in, 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 in the academic terms, what is cyberbullying? I, I gave out some UNICEF's you know, practical description of it, but what is it? What is cyberbullying? Right. In, in academia, when you talk about cyberbullying, you, you're talking two words. Cyber directly relates to the use of computers and related te technology. Bullying, as we all know, is trying to inflict harm on someone um, whether knowing or unknowingly. So you put the two together, it's the use of computer and associated to technologies to try and then inflict harm on an individual or a person. And this kind of harm isn't physical. And that's why it's important to understand that when cyberbullying becomes the norm in our society, the effects transcend physical to emotional, affecting the mind, which is uh, even more uh, 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 disturbing than the, physic the physical physical harm. So, so how how different, uh, Sami, is cyber bullying from in person bullying? Because practically, first as we've been to school, people get to workplaces, the security agencies, and we talk about bullying, bullying. How different is that from cyber bullying? Well, thank you very much, Stan. There's a lot of difference when it comes to cyber bullying and what we call face to face bullying. The difference is that with face-to-face uh, -face or your bullying in school or in your community, it is done in the presence of few people or one-on-one. -on -one. But when it comes to cyberbullying here, the geographical context changes. It's now going to be seen by everybody who is online, not only in your own country where the person is bullying you on or whatever platform, but it's going to be global. So the effect is way dire when you consider the two. Physical bullying, if you have somebody who will stand up to your defense, it can be nipped in the bud. If it's in school, the school authority usually have a remedial process. You report, they ad address it through disciplinary committee and what have you. But in cyber bullying, the game changes totally. And the effect is way, way dire. Because children as are most vulnerable Sometimes they go through it. And because there is no proper mechanism to address this all the time, it ends in a very, sometimes severe cases where, like Paddy said earlier, it has mental implications, it has physical, sometimes psychological as well. So this is the clear difference. And it is important that we separate the two. The physical face-to-face -face bullying can be handled in a different way. Online also has its own approach, and I'm sure by the time we get to the end of the program, we'll bring more to light. To so, so Paddy, what 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 are some of the examples you can share uh, of cyberbullying? Right. Well, when it comes to cyberbullying, it it starts most of the time as some benign joke that friends uh, be, uh, uh, will try to. Um, maybe say in terms of the, uh, the their victim. But basically, when it comes to examples, we're talking about uh, impersonation is one of them, uh, spreading lies and rumors about uh, an individual online. Um, it goes to the point where now you find people even posting embarrassing uh, things about their victims, uh, embarrassing videos and, and, and messages about them. So it, it's now when you ask the difference, you know, when someone is bullying you physically, they're, they're, they're trying to affect you or cause bodily harm or, you know, they're, they're right in front of you. But when it comes to the cyberspace, that's when the dynamic changes because now they're trying to harm your person. 
and it goes a long way to even affect a person's self-esteem. Uh, uh, one, 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 one of the things that uh, it, it could aff affect. So impersonation, one of them. Um, spreading lies and rumors about people. Uh, posting embarrassing videos uh, ab about them. They're, they're, and even sometimes our own things that we post. You may have posted something years ago and then it resurfaces online and then they use it against you. I have some examples that I, I, I'll share you know, later, but Sami, any other examples that you want to share? Oh, there, are, there, are, there are quite a lot. Uh, you look at how it's now trending. Anything that is posted, unfortunately, there's this thing that the internet never forgets. Digital footprints. Anytime. So it becomes very imperative. And some of the cases, we've seen them. Kids taking their own lives because they can't stand the stigma or the shame that it comes with. People jumping up. And there's something I want to put across here. The people who are causing the bullying or being bullied, most of them are youngsters and adolescents. And the fundamental problem is that anybody who is alive now and is below 25 years, we have something we call in our brain the prefrontal context. This particular part of the brain fully develops after 25 years. And it is what makes the adolescent very impulsive. They act irrationally. Sometimes you ask your child, why, didn't you, why did you do this? They have no reason. It's because the ability to really think through things has not been fully developed. So they may post things about their friends that may hurt them. It is sometimes not something they've thought through before they do. It's because they don't have that knowledge of reading through what they've posted and putting themselves in the shoes of whoever's going to read. So with this fundamental problem, it calls for continuous education that listen. If you're online and you tend to be the bully or the one being bullied, you have to know your limits. Always think of what you post. Because over there, there is no proper structure in streamlining what you post. It's after you've posted that the ramifications will show up, whether it's being liked, disliked, commented on, or stuff like that. So it becomes very important that we understand that these youngsters that are posting, they are not posting because they, want, they really want to cause harm. Some of them is sheer ignorance. And one must be very clear about that. A few weeks ago, yeah. um, a young daughter of uh, one of our leading politicians, uh, a video you know, was posted by uh, some, I don't know how to describe the page, but something account that has been created purposely to just push stuff. And, um, a video that she had innocently shared with some friends uh, more than four years ago, you know, was posted by this account and, you know, making noise and says, oh, she's out there, young girl, you know, dancing and doing whatever. And a couple of bloggers were also pushing out and some elderly folks were posting it on Facebook. And I went to say to one of them that what you are doing is cyberbullying and it's actually an offense. So be careful, you know, because I may be tempted to take action against you if you continue doing that. Some saw what it was. Others thought that, ah, it's a video, and we are pushing it, so what is the problem? You know, uh, she shouldn't, and I said, listen, you are putting out a video that the person has not put out on those platforms. You are the one who is putting, you are, you are, you are cyber bullying the person with all kinds of comments, and like you said, all kinds of psychological and emotional trauma that yeah. comes with those things because if I send you something yes. and for a certain reason you decide for instance to go and put it out there and it is shaming me you are cyber bullying yeah, nice. me because I didn't give you the thing for you to go and put out there but the education is not there people think that I have found a video. There are times when people share some videos with me, and I tell the person, delete it. I'm not interested in this video. So, oh, bro, but you know, see, I said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not interested in it because I, what am I am I supposed to also go and share it about the person or otherwise? That. So you see, people don't have a clear and proper understanding of all these craze that we have now about social media, and they think that 
anything at all that the sea can just be, be, be put out there. Now, from all the issues that you have raised so far, how can we, as part of this conversation, get people to understand that it's easy to spread, but like you were saying earlier, you need to pause and look at what you have and ask yourself, is this something that is worthy of putting out there? Paddy. Yeah, so it's, it's a very good point you've made. Um, a lot of the time we just, out of the blue, sometimes people go out, they're having a good time and then they just start posting on social media, only to take it off maybe the next day, they're like, oh my God, did I really post this? So always the rule of thumb is that before you, uh, you, you post, think about it. Is this something that you would be happy seeing online a year, two years, or four years later? If, if the answer is no, then don't post it. Because now we, we live in a society where everybody wants to uh, present an image or posture in a certain way to be likable. But in, in the process of doing that, we're also putting ourselves in a position where those same things that we put out there for us to be liked are the same things that eventually could be used to bully us online. So it's important to always ask yourself, is this entirely necessary for me to post? If the answer is no, don't post it. We have to be circumspect. We don't have to post everything online. You know, we have to also know that our, our lives, we have personal lives. When we talk about privacy, in as much as we give our information to others and we expect them to uh, uh, adhere to the privacy uh, 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 the rights that we have, we also owe it to ourselves to ensure that whatever we are giving out, uh, we, we, we're thinking about our privacy. If I know that this thing is too personal for me and if it falls into someone's hands, it exposes me in a way that I don't want to be exposed, I won't, give, I won't post it out there. I mean, I, 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 an example is where you go for programs or you just go anywhere and people just love to pull out their phones mm -hmm. and some are even going in life. I'm saying that you are at a program. You see, depending, I mean, for those of us who are into professional media and packaging, I always have issues because depending on how I am seated, depending on what I'm bringing, if I'm not talking to anybody, my facial expression can depict somebody who is unhappy. It can depict somebody who is drunk. It can depict anything. And you are there, and you are doing Facebook Live, and just parrying the phone around, and you think that everybody there must appear in, in, in whatever it is that you are. But you are putting me out there in a bad way. Then, right as you are doing that, your so-called Facebook Live, somebody cuts the part where maybe my, my shirt is not well tucked in, or my um, the penis area is not well, whatever, and they begin to push it out there. You, you, you are leading them to cyberbullying. But like I'm saying, a lot of people don't, in fact, sometimes you see that, you're even telling somebody that, oh, please stop the filming. You think that it is some right that because he's able to buy some two by four, uh, whatever, smartphone, he, he should just be doing anything at all. It, it's, it's a big problem. Sometimes unsolicited shots are done to you. Now, the first point of call is what I said, uh, education. Usually, we don't have a clear-cut uh, program where we say, okay, this is the official photographer, or this is the uh, area for photography. Everybody is able to pick out a phone. Now, the education must go wide and far. Now, listen, whenever you pick out your phone, you have to be responsible. You don't just take shots. And then again, when it comes to cyberbullying, sometimes the people who are doing it, they are doing it in maybe the context that they want to maybe project a particular image or create a content. Here, we must put on a litmus test. And this litmus test must go to find out whether whatever fun you are creating, is it going to make somebody look bad? Or it will make you look bad? What is the intent you want to put out? Now, uh, there's this saying that goes like, listen, if the joke of the day is not being laughed at collectively, everybody is not laughing together, and they are laughing at you, 
that it has moved from mere joke to bullying, either in the physical or whether it's being recorded online or it's being posted by someone. So one must ensure that whenever you are creating a content, always ask yourself, this thing I'm going to create for laugh, or this thing that someone has shared with me for laugh, is it going to be something that if I am the person on the other side, will I laugh with a, with a joke? Or will it be something that will uh, undermine me or make me look unpresent or make me uncomfortable in my own skin? If you are able to come out with this, you realize that then you shouldn't post it. If you receive same, don't be uh, a promoter of cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not a creator of the content, but it lands on your phone like you said. You, we have to be very clear in our minds what we propagate, what we post, to ensure that we don't create this uh, unending loop of uncomfortableness and bullying people. I, I'll go into prevention and, and how we can stay safe uh, on social media and the internet. But to, to, to both of you, um, how do I report cyberbullying? What, uh, Paddy first. So that's, that's a very good question. In other jurisdictions, there are even they're, they're readily available resources online uh, where you can just go on a website and then report. In Ghana, I know um, the, the, center, uh, the Cyber Security Agency, authority. Yeah, the Cyber Security Auto Authority, CSA, is an uh, uh, agency that has been set up to look into issues uh, related to the cyberspace. So that would be my first uh, point of call. You go on their website, uh, look for the uh, contact information, and then report it. it you're always, uh, you, you're never going to go wrong going to law enforcement, in this case, the uh, police service. They, you can also report if you are a victim of uh, cyberbullying or you, uh, you know of someone who is a victim of cyberbullying. Always report it. Because it's, it's only when we begin to report and then people begin to face the ramifications of their actions that people are going to begin to think. As Samuel said, it's all about ignorance. A lot of people are ignorant of what the effects are and even what the implications of perpetrating those uh, 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 crimes are. So once you begin to report and then people are being uh, made to face the effects of their actions, then people will begin to learn from that. So that's part of the education part, part as well. And, 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 and Sami, whilst you also yeah. you know, respond and, and give us the, the practical ways of contacting, for instance, the Cyber Security Authority, and uh, I know the police uh, service has also created a Cyber uh, Security uh, Office. Why is it important okay. for us to report as All well? Right. Now, the beauty about cyber bullying, which is not so beautiful, is that once it occurs online, the unending loop cannot be seen in the nearest future. Because like you said earlier, it's going to be reposted. The first point of call, if you are the one being bullied, is to have what I'll call a trust talk with somebody you trust. It could be a parent, it could be a guardian, it could be a school authority or a counselor in your school. Because sometimes when you're being bullied online, it is a soft touch. You will not have a physical mark on your body to show the evidence. So we say that when it is being done online, you have a physical, we can screen print to have a proof that person A, B, C on this account said this and why is that to me. That is the first point of call. Always resort to somebody you trust. The second approach is to report to a high authority like the Cyber Security Authority. And then I can share with you, the Cyber Security Authority has a, a toll free number or a short code, 292. When you call, they will give you access. And then they also have a very vibrant uh, reporting platform, but it is not limited to only cyberbullying. When you go onto their website, they have a form which you will fill, and then select the purpose for which you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are reporting. Now, you and I know that typically in Ghana, in the context of Ghana, the police have so much problems on their hand. Going to add up to it that somebody bullied me in school or somebody said this on me online is something that we haven't seen being materialized. And here, I want to sound a word of caution to the adults. Recently, we've seen adults on social media bullying each other. One person picks a phone, says very unprintable things about the other. Two hours later, 
the person who receives also picks a phone and also says something very unprintable about the other, and it goes viral. And we all propagate it in posting and reposting. Here, because the children only do what they see us do as adults, it becomes a norm that hey, XYZ can pick a phone and throw shade at his fellow uh, friend online. They will meet to fight physically. The other will also pick and give a rebutter. It goes back and forth, back and forth. And these are all things that we must put a stop to. If you are being bullied, and I've seen some mature people take it up and sue, that is the result. The law court has a lay down procedure in anybody who defames you or say things that are untrue about you, peddling lies about you, you can take the people on. But the challenge here is that this happens to our youngsters. So for them, they are vulnerable. They will not have that zeal to do that. So for me, another solution I'd like to put out is for parents to build very good self-esteem for their children. Now, I can put my example out there for people to learn from. I have a very young daughter who is uh, very crazy about technology. So she has every access. She's able to open and access every phone in the house, except mine, of course. <laughs> what I started when she was two was that I started giving her lofty questions. Like, who is she? So we created a lofty question like, who is She's Beulah. So who is Beulah? And she will narrate you, Beulah is beautiful. Beulah is smart. Beulah is a child of God. Now, this subtle way of letting her know her, who she is, in future, anybody who comes to tell her otherwise, she knows that she has been subconsciously coded to not listen to a third party who tells her you are not beautiful or using any defect on her body, which people do. That hey, you are too fat, you are too slim, you are too thin, you are too uh, ugly, to make them lose their self and in turn doing bullying. So for me, it's important that to avert this, we have to make sure our children who are the vulnerable have good self-esteem. Because Mr. Stan, I'm sorry to say, it's going to get worse. We are drawing... There's a line between reality and cyber life or online, and the line is blurring by the day. Yeah. Maybe a day we'll come here and talk about what the social media gurus like Facebook, Instagram, Google are doing to create what we call augmented reality or virtual reality. And these are very, very look-alike platforms that if care is not taken, a child will wake up and there will be no need for him or her to ride her bicycle again. Now it is going on with video games where you have them being embedded, they don't step out of the room, there's no physical activity, and it's going to get worse. The only way out is to build a good self-esteem for our kids, allow them to be self-sustained. Uh, they should be very confident within themselves that you can't bully me online and I'll get it emotionally to affect me. It's something we have to be very conscious about. Make sure every school has a unit that will handle this and handle it very well. Because it can degenerate to something that we can all not handle if care is not taken. And I'm glad you have taken up this challenge on Wizard TV to do this. Omega is in Bali and he just sent a message. Before I come back to you, Sammy, uh, that good evening, uh, boss. Uh, Cyberbullying is a serious thing. It can lead to suicide if the victim is not mentally strong. I believe many, especially uh, celebrities, suffer from cyberbullying because they live, some live fake lives on social media. So any little mistake, the boys go bashing them. All the same, cyberbullying is wrong and all must desist from uh, sin. Um, the number to send your messages as well is 055-269-7939 or email us at TV at wizzergroup.com. Minambi Abel also writes on Facebook that thanks for educating us more on this important uh, topic. And then from Konongo, Daniel Ampon says thanks for hosting this great minds. They really know the practicalities uh, surrounding the topic under discussion. Sir, 
please, can the originator of a picture or message of vulgarity against me be known or be found? Yeah, it's, it's always possible. But the, the, the main thing is that, as Samuel said, when you report to the Ghana Police Service, they have so many things on their hands, right? There's a lot of crime that's going on. So it all comes to the focus that you put into what you want, the, the investigation that you're, 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 you're doing. So as a certified uh, computer forensic hack, uh, hacking forensic investigator, I know of the tools that you can use to find some of these things. But these are specialized tools and sometimes they're expensive, right? So you need to invest a lot of money into these things. And you can even start from sometimes even your phone that you use to take pictures has metadata on, on, uh, 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 attached to the Twitch, yeah. pictures. I send you a picture, you, you'd be able to tell what phone I used and where I took it and all of those things. It's a starting point. So sometimes as, as these, these things, this metadata that comes with a, a video or the media that is uh, transmitted could be used to trace it. But to, when someone who is very sophisticated does uh, 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 send some of these things, it might be difficult for the layperson to trace it. But as we all know, a lot of the time, people are doing it out of ignorance and they don't even know that there's information attached to what they are sending that could lead to them. So in a nutshell, yes, it's possible. But it also depends on the sophistication of the, 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 the act. The act. Yeah. The, 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 one, one of the effects or impact, impact of cyberbullying is that those who <laughs> sometimes unfortunately suffer it quickly deactivate their accounts and they run away. From, from either Facebook or Twitter or wherever because, I mean, it's like that's the only safe zone. Just quickly deactivate your account and go. Of course, if you ask me, I will not tell you to deactivate your account either because, I mean, I mean if you try to go there, we'll go there and we'll, 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 we'll do with ourselves very well. But without giving up your access to the Internet or, or to the social uh, media, how can one prevent him or herself from being cyber bullied or stay safe you know on on on, on social media okay. I, I must uh, add that day in day out these social media sites are always improving on how they protect people from being cyber bullied now uh, as the saying goes good is not good enough if better is expected so it's a work in progress however the onus is on you the person who is going online to do the right thing. Now there are tools that will help you say, stay safe online. I.e., when you create an account, for instance, on TikTok, if you are below 16 years old, automatically your account is created with a private security to the extent that it is no more public. Unless you explicitly make it public. That is a generic thing they've put in their application so that Less than 16-year-olds don't get exposed to what they post that non-followers and followers will like, will like it or duplicate it or repost it. So first point of call is you, the user, what you post. Now, of course, the internet comes with so many benefits. One cannot say that because oh, I've been cyberbullied, I'll stay off the internet. Why should you be the one losing out when you are the one being bullied? It, it doesn't add up. But rather, once you take these precautionary measures, you protect yourself. One, make sure your account is well protected. You don't share your password. It's like your mobile pin. You share it at your own detriment. Anybody who picks up your mobile phone and knows your mobile pin can transact business on your behalf. Two, whenever you create an account, ensure that you only follow people you know. And you don't share things with people that you don't also know. Ensure that whatever you post is being talked through. You think through it properly before you post. So that at least, like Paddy said earlier, 10 years from now, would you look at it and feel embarrassed, embarrassed of your own post? If the question is yes, then don't do it at all. The same way in some of the platforms, if it is a private account and you are not following me back, you can't even like my post. You don't even see it. So one must be very conscious 
of what he or she does on his or her account. Unfortunately, the education is not as wide as the usage. And uh, there's another flip side to the coin, monetization. Mm -hmm. The more people like your post, the more the tendency of you generating content. In, in, in our, in our, in our, in our uh, circles. <laughs> you know, everybody appears to be an influencer. Uh, that, 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 it's been so abused. abused. Yes, everybody yes, is yes, an yes, influencer yes, 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 or yes. wants to be an, an influencer. influencer. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. They think that posting nonsense is what and will and get them that following, yeah. of course. So, and it's, it's, it's lack of education and out of ignorance. Unfortunately, it is not making the place very productive as it ought to be because people are abusing the platform to do untoward things. So the honors really lies on the person creating the account. And also, parents are the most uh, important players in this particular scenario. When you buy gadgets or phones for your kids, don't just leave it at that. Get into the habit of putting in some parental controls. Certain websites can be blocked. And we should have a clear-cut phone time or internet time. Don't leave them to be at liberty to use it anyhow, anywhen, whenever they like. And it's just not going to go well for the kids themselves. And you, the parent, because at the end of the day, when a problem comes, you'll be the one to solve it. So it's important that parents are very clear in their minds what time they allot for their kids to be online. If they buy the gadgets for them, Make sure that you put in the right security features to ensure that you can. And please, uh, Wizard TV is always available, and we are also available to support. If you don't have the know-how, reach out. We will help you to put those measures in place to ensure that at least the future leaders are supported and protected. Paddy, any, any, anything more to add? Yeah, I, th I think it, at, at the end of the day, it comes to, as Samuel said a lot, but it, it comes to the need for people to be seen, right? And for, for because of that need, they want to put themselves out there. And now the whole fake life, life thing is something we can talk about for hours on end. But um, I think even on Instagram, you can, you can post something and then make sure that only a select few friends are seeing it, right? So if you definitely have to post it, you're having a great time, a great night out, and you want to capture it for and then post it for some friends to see, you can select uh, a few friends who you can trust and then uh, uh, make it available for them only to see. It's the same on WhatsApp, your WhatsApp stories and other things. So the social media uh, platforms, the, the, the social media companies have put in a lot of tools to help us. The thing is for us to make use of these tools to protect ourselves. And that's where the work has to uh, uh, be put in. The default settings, for the most part, aren't the most secure. But then we have to go the extra mile. But the unfortunate thing is that a lot of people don't know about these things. And avenues like this, uh, this, this program, as discussing it, could be the starting point for people to get to know that this is even possible for you to do. Once you know it's possible, then you find ways to do it. So, and, 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 and like I said earlier, for, for some people, of course, they don't know that they can even report. They don't know that, in fact, cyber bullying, cyber crime is one of the easiest, you know, crimes that you can report and, and get action on. So they, they prefer to rather run. Of course, even you know the account that is even cyber bullying you. You can report that account, whether on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and support, you know, the... the uh, with some evidence, and the, the, the person's account can also be taken. So don't 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 fret, don't run away. Yeah. You know, um, um, I know we know that psychologically and emotionally, some of these things can be traumatizing, and they they can get you to be in. But sometimes it's good to be strong and rather move in and take action. There's a young man on Twitter who uh, I observe just sends out. Rise any nonsense to anything that somebody somebody pulls and then comes and whatever. And of course, I mean, maybe he gets him some likes right. and, and retweets and stuff. So he thinks that it is it is fun. But it is not, you know. And ladies and gentlemen, I mean he 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 I think he lost. He went for a job interview, and he was reminded by those who were interviewing him that you know, are you not the one who did it? That's that's yeah. the effect of the exactly. digital footprints that we are, exactly. we are talking about. But th that act that he engages in all the time is cyberbullying. Mm. 
and he can be dealt with legally if if if, if you report and um, we'll give you some more details about the cyber security authority and how to you know go ahead with your reports the the, the report platform that, that that they have but you need to stop that you know body shaming somebody posts a picture and then you just go and say oh look at his uh, uh, you know contours or oh, look at this guy with oblong head and, and all that i mean you, you cannot take delight in just you know shaming people in that manner and obviously bullying bullying them so let's 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 be careful the topic for this if there is cyber bullying why you must stop on a conversation with stan dobe here on Wizard tv insights my guest Samuel Laye and Paddy Wonder, they are all cyber security experts and uh, data protection experts and uh, I believe that you are enjoying the uh, insights that they are bringing to the subject. Our aim here on Wizard TV, as always, is to broaden the conversation, let everybody be a part of the conversation so you can situate what you are going through or what you have experienced or observed within the context of what we are talking about. And we do hope that the effort we make in bringing out some of these issues that are ordinarily not spoken about, the education and the details that we bring and the preventive mechanisms that we introduce you to continue to be very helpful to you, to your siblings, to your children, to your parents, and uh, whoever you are connected with. Wizard TV Insight is on every Monday at 8 p.m. and we have a repeat of the program on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and also uh, on Saturdays uh, in, in the morning. If you have any questions for my guests or you have some experiences to narrate or some information to provide, the email address is wizardtv at wizardgroup.com and the WhatsApp number is 055-269-7939. We will go for uh, a break uh, shortly, but I want to take some uh, questions that uh, I have here before we we continue, and um, Kwamina is watching from Asin Fusu in the central region. And uh, Paddy, he says, when someone hacks your account and uses it to post useless stuff, is it a form of cyberbullying? Absolutely. Uh, uh, one of the examples of cyberbullying is impersonation. Right. So when I uh, hack your account and then post something as if I am you, it's cyberbullying and it's uh, considered a crime. So absolutely, someone hacking into your account and posting something as if they were you is cyberbullying. Um, Chris uh, says cyberbullying must stop because it can kill. Thank you and I love the show. Uh, can it kill? Oh yes, heavy. Sometimes you, you realize that people's start withdrawing. Victims start withdrawing. You're home with your kid. School day, the child will tell you, I don't feel like going to school. Don't take it for granted that he's being lazy or maybe the homework hasn't been done. There could be something more under that particular decision of a child not to go. Because the day before, he or she was eager to go to school. All of a sudden, he's withdrawing. Mm. Or something has happened, they went for a vacation and came back, and his attitude towards school has changed. Your child is no more comfortable sitting with you to talk about school matters because maybe you feel you are a big boy, you are a big girl. Why do I allow such a person to say that about you online or stuff like that? So it can very much kill. And there have been instances where people take their lives because their friends said, oh, you are ugly or you, you, you should die already. Like the world would be a better place without you. Such things when this adolescent here, it gets to them. It gets to them. And because they have not fully developed the uh, frontal cortex, prefrontal cortex, they are able to, they are not able to overcome it. And they don't have good self-esteem at that young age. So they end up killing themselves. Recently, we had some on the university campuses. People jumping from roof to fall down. It's not because they, they, they have been stabbed, or, but because they've been bullied I mean, online. He's gone to chase some girl, didn't succeed. It, and his friends, his friends start 
you know, send you challenge. Challenge. Ah, you slack. You slack. You go the girl. You know. You do, do, do. Before you realize, you know, I'm told, and sometimes the effect is, is too late. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can't go back to correct those uh, challenges, challenges that they went through. Yeah. Master Planner is watching from Bandai. Uh, Kabongule and says, Good evening, Stan. I'm really enjoying the show. How do I report cyberbullying or which institution is right for me to report cyberbullying? So, Master Planner, we spoke about that a while ago. The Cyber Security uh, Authority is the institution. They have a reporting platform, and um, um, the, 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 the website is www.csa.gov.gh. But the reporting platform has a slash, slash report. And if you look on the screen now, we have the details there for you. So, you can visit the website csa.gov.gh slash report and um, you can log in there and make your report. You can also email them at report at csa.gov.gh. You can also call the toll free line 292 from any number. You can also send an SMS from any number 292. You can also WhatsApp them at 050-160-3111. 050-160-3111 and they also have an app, a mobile app and uh, if you go into Google Play Store or app, app Store, you type in and search for CSA Ghana, uh, you would uh, find the app and this is the reporting you know, platform that you can report. Uh, any incidents of cyber security that you experience. If you want to just read more about the Cyber Security Authority, you go to csa.gov.gh and uh, uh, find out a lot more information there uh, about uh, how to uh, report. So uh, I believe that uh, Master Planner, you and all viewers have uh, received that uh, information. So, I mean, the website has quite uh, interesting information there, protection of children online and how to have a safer digital uh, Ghana. And um, the Cyber Security Authority was established uh, by Cyber Security Act 2020, which is Act 1038, to regulate cyber security activities in Ghana and promote the development of cyber security in the country. Um, uh, we also have a message here from um, um, Sami Inho. He says, good evening, Stan. In order to overcome this practice, it is high time we educate especially young children uh, on the use of social media. It's not every information you share. We must first check the source of what you want to share and cross-check before sharing. And Sami is re-emphasizing the points that Paddy and uh, Samuel have made on this, uh, uh, on this matter. And um, we also have Abraham is watching from Abuakwa uh, Agogo in Kumase. Thanks for hosting this educative program. Thanks, Wizard TV. And um, Kwame now, we've dealt with Kwame's uh, question already. Um, Chris's uh, question has also been dealt with. And then Clement is uh, watching from the capital of the Hafo region, Gorso. And uh, Clement says, I work with Genesis Radio as a digital manager. I must say I am very impressed with your show. It's my first time watching and thank you for the education. I think cyberbullying must be taught in schools to help our future kids to get enough know-how on cyberbullying. The children appear to be already inundated with uh, a lot of subjects. I mean, is this that something that should be introduced as a subject or as part of you know social studies or something what uh, party so so I, I i do believe that they do have uh they do study about computers and as part of uh studying anything related to computers uh you should be able to incorporate some of these topics as it's very essential in our current day and age with the proliferation of uh, digital uh, uh channels of uh, communication and and keeping in touch with people so definitely uh teachers who are 
teaching kids uh, about computers and other things should be able to incorporate some of these uh, 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 topics into uh, what they do. Because at the end of the day, ed the education that we give to the children must be relevant mm. to our day and age. There's no point teaching them about things that are not relevant for their lives. And I find it, uh, 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 personally, I find it that it's always uh, uh, effective when you teach people and they are able to use the knowledge that you give them practically. practically yeah. it's, it's very, it's, they, they, they become interested in it and they go even the extra mile to research and then learn more o o on their own. So, uh, it's, uh, uh, Sammy, how, how, how can this be taught to derive the benefits that we, we, we would expect from such education? Okay, so here is uh, it's a two-way approach. You can look at it from the Ghana Education Service context. Because unfortunately, no school can teach something that is not being authorized by them. So they must make a frantic e effort that whatever syllabus has been approved, this must be in there. Now, like Paddy said, the best way to approach is the computer teachers themselves. Now, I can bring this home because there's a particular uh, term we have online we call netiquette. It's just like etiquette, but in the context of the internet. internet. It's a whole way of life, of how you can live online and play safe and be courteous, and how you live offline. Now, I believe strongly that with schools, and I happen to consult for So Clinic International School, there have been instances where I've been invited to, not, to just not talk to the students, but also talk to the teachers and the parents. There have been instances where I go to educate the parents and the teachers as to how they can help bring these issues to bear and help solve them. So people, one, must ensure that whenever there's an issue, they don't push it under the rug. Make good examples out of it. And make the person who is being bullied feel comfortable. In the same way, the person who is doing the bullying must also be educated. That listen, your inactions and actions may cause X, Y, Z some pain and harm. So this is from it. If you do that, these are the laid down procedures. Either you'll be punished, maybe there will be a suspension, or some practical laid down procedure. Listen, if you don't want to go through these processes, don't do cyberbullying. Don't engage in cyberbullying. And it must be from both the policy aspect and also the education aspect in the classroom. And this is something that I think uh, we can all champion collectively. And it's not only in, uh, unfortunately, when it comes to cyberbullying, it's not limited to Ghana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a global, I, 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 I will bring in some, yeah, it's, it's a some, global thing. So Africa, everybody must sorting. ensure that you, you, you be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. Let me take some messages from Facebook now. Clenam Dogbe says, great, most of us are ignorant. We think we are just teasing, and, and that's also very true. Um, Samboati says, I like the subject you are discussing, but I, don't, I didn't expect you to mention or cite any person as an example or as a perpetrator of cyberbullying. Be professional. That said, the show is interesting and educative. Well, then I prefer to, I prefer to be seen as somebody who is not professional. If somebody is cyberbullying, it's a crime. And, and, and I mean, I didn't even mention any, any name, but if you, if you know who it is who is perpetrating the cyberbullying and you think that the person must be encouraged to continue doing that, then obviously all the interesting things that you have heard on this program has obviously not entered through you very well to understand what we are talking about. You don't shield cyber, cyber bullies. And uh, I note the negativity anytime you come onto this uh, uh, platform, but. You don't have to watch if it doesn't make sense to you. I think so. Wizard TV Insights. My name is Stan Dugbe. We'll take a short break, and when we come, I'll take some further comments and questions from our viewers. Stay tuned. <music>
From the Lenclé Sports Stadium to the Santiago Bernabeu, from the Boko Marina to the Madison Square Gardens, we would make sure that you do not miss out on all the scoop, the kicks, and all the flicks in the world of sports, from association football to boxing to hockey to tennis. We make sure that we bring the action to you right in your home. And for our Panthers out there as well, we have something very special for you in the Investors Corner. Join me on Wazo TV every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for Ghana's number one sports post-mortem show, The Arena. My name is Kosi Fiaka, and I would be your host. Your flight is ready to leave. Sit back and relax and enjoy the flight. Wizard TV and this is Wizard TV Insights. Uh, if you are watching us on uh, your multi TV or HD plus or your satellite television, remember that you can follow us on Facebook at Wizard TV or on Twitter or YouTube also at Wizard TV. Our website is Wizard.tv and uh, we welcome you to enjoy our 24-hour exciting uh, programming that we bring you movies music documentaries live programs uh, etc and um, i'm sure today you enjoyed the uh, live uh, broadcast that we brought you from the upper west region where the president is on a two-day tour of the upper west region tomorrow you can uh, follow us uh, here on Wizard TV to continue uh, watching his tour and also we would follow him to the Savannah region from the Upper West region on Wednesday. This is Wizard TV. We bring you the information that you must know. And tonight we are discussing cyberbullying here on Wizard TV Insights. My name is Stan Dogbe and um, today is August 22nd and uh, it's the birthday of my very good friend um, my uh, pal and uh, I described earlier on Facebook today as uh, my business connector and uh, she's deputized for me on this show before and she deputizes for me as well uh, with a lot of my uh, projects uh, out there and uh, she is a client of the event PR and uh, we are happy that we have been part of her transformation and her grooming and her branding over, over the years. So Bobia Dako Poko, uh, happy 45th uh, birthday to you and um, during the break I had my uh, very you know football partisan uh, team from MCR rushing into the studio to remind me that uh, Manchester United won their game uh, and I'm surprised. I mean, these are people who were demolished by four goals to nil and they, they've won by two goals to one and they are all excited and jumping all over here. But you deserve to be congratulated uh, and I think it's a very good uh, birthday present for our friend Obobia. She's a very good friend of uh, the Weasel uh, group of companies and uh, especially for Weasel TV and the event PR. So congratulations Manchester uh, United but um, the season is still one for Manchester City to win and so um, you can't lose all the time so it's good you won, you won this time. So um, Stephen 
forget about your win. Now, let's get onto the skins. Uh, put uh, the information and statistics out there so that we can <laughs> educate our people more. So, the, the, the most common types of online uh, harassment, um, uh, according to information from the United States, from a survey of United States students, and we believe that for these online things, as Sami had said earlier, they are not limited to Ghana. So, it can, it can, um, it can continue, you know, you can, you can relate it to, to Ghana and to Africa, you know, and, um, and, uh, and then use it and understand. So sexual remarks, 12.1%. Online rumors, 20.1%. Uh, mean comments, 22.5%. And others, 45.3%. So, I, mean, I mean, does this statistics surprise you? Not at all, not at all, because um, coming from the U.S., so you, you, you look at the sexual remarks and uh, uh, the other, other things that are uh, mentioned there, it's not surprising at all. I'm, I'm curious to know what the, the, other, others, others, <laughs> the others are, <laughs> but if, if my, I, I, could, I could take a, a very good guess in terms of what, <laughs> what, what the others are, but definitely not surprising with uh, everybody and their grandmother having access to um, computers, <laughs> computers and, and, and uh, internet mobile internet phones and, and the internet, uh, you'll find a lot of people <laughs> hiding behind these uh, devices and the internet to do some of these things. I mean, so. I know that in the U.S., for instance, I mean, you know, because of the group games that the young people play, there are times when two or three will gang up against one and, you know, do all kinds of, all kinds of things. So I'm sure they offer to. Now, we, we, we also have um, statistics on the uh, forms of... Um, online uh, harassment um, uh, so and there are different forms and and 35 percent uh, had sent screenshots of someone's status or photo to laugh at them in a group chat 25 uh, percent had trolled somebody in an online game that's just what i was talking about a while ago 17 uh, percent liked or shared something online that openly mocks another person and then you have 16% had done something to subtly annoy somebody they didn't like uh, uh, online. So, I mean, these, these, these are not surprising. These are things that, yeah, even within our Ghanaian context, context, you know, happen, happen, happen all the time. And, 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 and these are the things that we are, we are, we are talking about. So, maybe we're using cyberbullying, but online harassment is just is, is, is exactly what we, we, are, we are talking about. And the reasons for um, cyber uh, uh, bullying, according to uh, the statistics, shows that teens who report being bullied say it was because of their appearance. And that's 61 percent. And um, academic achievement is 25 percent. And um, uh, race, you know, is 17 you know, percent and uh, sexuality, 15 percent, financial status, 15 percent, uh, religion, 11 percent, and uh, others is back there again, and uh, uh, that one is uh, 20 percent. But I mean, you are not surprised that no, 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 appearance is 61 percent. Mm, 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 mm. In today's day and age where uh, I, I came to Ghana and uh, I heard this new thing, packaging, yes. uh, when, <laughs> when I came, packaging has become a, a big thing. So everybody wants to look uh, like they, they are someone, even mm. if they don't look that way. And it's not surprising to see appearances exactly. there because exactly. even in the U.S. it's, it's, it's the same thing. Oh. You find people posing and taking all of these uh, fancy pictures and posting mm -hmm. them online. Mm -hmm. But then you meet them in person, they're they are not like that. Yeah. You know, the whole uh, filters and all yeah, those exactly. things that people use. So if you, among friends, mm -hmm. and you're not using it as a teenager, yeah. and you present your authentic self, yeah. then they begin to uh, mock, mock you and then You, you, you make should fun be here when you. I do a discussion on the fake lives. Right. Yeah. <laughs> as they say. I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. that... Um, <laughs> One of my good friends will not, will not talk to you again <laughs> after that. <laughs> because, I mean, look, let, let's, let's admit it. Yeah. There is a lot of fake lies yeah, on, yeah, yeah. on social media. I mean, some posts, they are here, they are there. Mm -hmm. This is a picture from some five years ago mm -hmm. when we had some, you know, opportunity yeah, to, to you know, travel somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all, it's all so there. As for packaging, we'll, we'll go with it. I, I now, one, one of the interesting, <laughs> yeah. uh, not interesting, some of the sad 
details from the statistics is about cyberbullying uh, has been is targeting mostly teenage girls and uh, according to statistics 15 percent of the girls are aged between 12 and uh, 17 and they, they they suffer you know this this uh, abuse and um, i want to look at another statistics here that says that um, um, cyber bullying in social media and um, it says that i mean just looking at the share of social media platforms where cyber bullying occurs the most and uh, the the highest is instagram 42 percent and uh, facebook is 37 percent snapchat is 31 percent whatsapp is 12 percent youtube 10 percent and twitter nine percent of course these are from the united states and in ghana because uh, our highest our largest social media platform is facebook and then whatsapp before instagram mm -hmm. you know so maybe the detailing would be in that sense but it just tells you you know what what and then um, if i uh, can let me just look at one more and then we can take uh, questions from our uh, our viewers it is about the the most in, uh, interesting cyber bullying uh, uh, facts most interesting cyber bullying facts uh, if 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 you can have that so the most common type of online bullying is mean comments 22.5 percent and people are so mean you know but i say every day that if you come under my post and you are mean we will all be mean with each other you know uh, because i may not have the time to go and report you to somebody but it will be mean will be mean to each other particularly I and mean, if it's one of those accounts that are fake or whatever i'll not i'll, I'll not be interested in you and of course you leave my i'll block you i mean I, I won't keep you on my page for for anything and those who complain that you have been blocked i will block you because you, you, you don't make any, any any sense on my page 35 percent had shared a screenshot of someone's status or photo to laugh at them 61 percent of teenagers who report being bullied say it was because of their appearance as we said 41 percent of adults who use the internet have personally experienced online harassment 77 percent of online harassment victims reported that they had been harassed on facebook and seven in ten young people experience cyber bullying before they hit the age of 18. so those are uh, some of the statistics uh, out, out there and um Stan, i'd like to take a position on your stand against your position on your stand yes if someone is mean to you you also be mean back is he when you tend to reply or comment on the person's mean messages, mm -hmm. you rather encourage the person. The person. So that I, should you report, give, I should report. Don't him. report. I drop, should just, I should just block, block the off. person, and the person will no longer be relevant. And because these platforms have tools that allows you to report them, once you block report, because you see, you may have very strong self-esteem to show that it off mm -hmm. or a tough skin to wither it off. But the next victim may not, not. be that strong. So let's help to clean the system. Those who are doing that, once you block them three, four times, do not as have... For, as for Francis, so Clue and I, blocking is not our problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we, we blo we, after all, it is my page. Of course. You can go and do it on exactly. your own page, but don't... So, so... Yeah, I mean, they are, they, are, they are, because, you see, there are people who even come on my... If you come on my page mm. to contribute to a conversation mm. and you respond to somebody in whatever, I'll delete your post and I'll block you. I mean, because it. clearly you don't you don't have mm. any, anything mm. to do. And it to goes do to there. say a platform like WhatsApp is important that administrators take up the challenge. Some people are just there to tease people. They won't make meaningful contributions. They will never say posts that are not relevant is where they post on a platform. And these are all things that detract and reduce the progression of the page. Purpose for which pages are created are always defeated, defeated because admins are not very strict on ensuring that the function or the objective of the group oh, is, it, being it, it is being achieved. So it's important that this education to go out to those people as well. Charles is watching in Accra, says, I'm really enjoying your show. If someone hacks your account, uh, Paddy, and uses it to cyber bully, and eventually someone reports their account, will the law enforcement agencies come for you as an offender? Um, I, I believe that initially you uh, it was your attack yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was your that yeah. attack was hacked so yes. ultimately it's your responsibility to make sure that your account is secure and that nobody uh, uh, uses your account however if you're able to prove to them 
that your account was hacked, then you'd be you, and assist them in investigate, uh, investigating. Then you'd be left uh, off the hook. Okay. And to that point, it's important that if you realize your account is hacked, report it. The, the, at the moment you see that your account has been hacked, report it. Because again, someone could use your account, impersonate you, and then go and then be bullying someone online. And that would always come back to you. But law enforcement is all, always has the ability, especially if you, you cooperate with them, to find out who ultimately is behind it. One of the, the problems many people are having now is WhatsApp hacking. And, and there's a question on it. It says, good evening. Thanks so much for this wonderful opportunity. I have a question. How do we track those hacking people's accounts, more especially WhatsApp platforms? OK. So with that one, there's a procedure. It calls for education. Once your account has been compromised, what you have to do is to report to your admin. Now listen, I think my account, then they will drop you. Because what happens is that if in some instances, the admin himself has been hacked. So before I realize, the person has dropped the admin and made himself admin and having access to everybody's contact and also resources that they have in a group. Hence, it becomes very difficult for you to even uh, continue the group. In some instances, the whole group must be deleted because admin has been de-admined and the hacker has now taken full control <laughs> of, the, of the platform. <laughs> so it's important that once you have that, you, you quickly <laughs> notify <laughs> every member, either through another platform or call them and tell them, listen, my account has been compromised, this and that. And sometimes uh, we have to be vigilant. If you see a suspicious code asking you to reply, please call and confirm that, hey, are you who you say you are? Is it my friend I'm talking to? Because there have been instances where I mean, people... Sometimes yeah. I, I get surprised when yeah, yeah. somebody sends you a code, you yeah. respond, oh, you send all kinds of... Exactly. You don't even know that person. Exactly. The person is not even in your contact. It's not in your contact. Well, Tio Yossin says, good evening. I'm really enjoying the program. I often receive messages from unknown numbers asking you to come for loans. How do we deal with it, please? Okay. So, I mean, those are the SMS and those, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. finance and those things are what we call unsolicited text. Messages, yeah. MTN, for instance, I know has a platform where you can report such inst instances to. So they will block the person. But you yourself, you can drop, uh, block the person's account. And it's very easy. Go on to the contact and block that number. Once you block it, of course, sometimes they find other ways and means of getting back at you. But I'm sure with the uh, SIM registration going on, if we sanitize the system, once somebody approaches you, you can track and know who is doing what and who is behind a particular you know, code. You know most of those bulk messages mm -hmm. use bulk message yes, companies yes, and stuff yes. like that. And they mm. buy data mm -hmm. from various people mm -hmm. or mm. You know, they, 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 still, yeah. still data from different right. people. Yeah. So the contacts. Take, they take the contacts from yeah. a bank or right. any of these event yeah. organizers yes, and yes, just keep yes. adding. Mm. And uh, the selling proposition is that we can deliver to you bulk messages to a certain number of exactly. people. So, and then you suffer, you suffer, so you suffer it all. Yes. You know? Dominic is in Mankesim. He says, I'm very interested in cyber security, and I wish the program would be discussed much longer than this duration. Dominic, uh, well, we'll find time to do it again. And then uh, you know, sometimes there's viewer fatigue as well, so 90 minutes is fine. Good evening. Please, how would one know that he or she is being bullied. It, it, he or she is bullying someone, someone by continuously posting his or her picture on social media. Uh, even this, I should even ask the, the experts. I mean, if the picture is complimentary, if the picture is not complimentary uh, of the person or whatever, then you, I mean, you are cyber bullying the person. If it's a nice picture, if you post very nice pictures of me, I'm sure that I'll come and like it and say, Charlie, congrats. But if, if it's not a very, you know, uh, exciting one, and I'm not looking too good, or my shirt is, you know, torn or dirty or somewhere, you know. And they, they can, they can subject it to the litmus test we've created. Yeah. If the joke or whatever you're posting <laughs> is not laughable by all, oh. and it is making somebody not to laugh, it has moved from a joke to a bully. So once you realize that whatever you've posted, if it is you, you will not laugh at it, please don't post it. Banahini is in Nungwa. This cyberbullying thing is from some of the bloggers here in Ghana. They share 
some videos or even a storyline which makes it look normal to the kids because if blogger A or B is bullying uh, someone or even uh, a sitting president for that matter and no actions are being taken against him or her, the kids and even adults see it to be normal. Most of these bloggers need to be sanctioned. Report them to the Cyber Security Authority if you find any. Gilbert Novienio says one way to prevent cyber bullying is log out of your accounts on public computers or devices. Okay, I, I, I get that. And then um, I am Salman Faris watching live from Tamale in the northern region, uh, specifically Saval Savelugu. Your program is the best <laughs> ever. We urge you to promote it and make good, good use of it and also keep the country safe. Big shout out to you all <laughs> in the studio. Thank you very much, Salman, and uh, all those watching us from Tamale in the uh, northern uh, region. Um, I wanted to go back to Facebook and uh, take some comments there. Gilly Gilbert says, one way uh, to also prevent cyberbullying is to log out of your accounts. Okay, so somebody shared uh, that earlier. And then um, I, let me go to the emails now. And my name is Uchena Uwama uh, from Edo State in Nigeria. I love your show. It's quite interesting and educative. I love it. Please keep it up. Thank you very much, Uchama. And then Teofloss Apia says, this is a nice topic, very educative. We wish we can get much more from Wazo TV. Please, we can stop this cyber bullying when there is mass education on it uh, uh, and also its effect because majority of the citizens don't know about this. Teofloss Apia, thank you very much. And uh, that's basically what our uh, guests have been talking about that we need to educate people uh, more and uh, we are happy that we, we are contributing uh, our quota one way or the other to uh, this and then um, Chidedu uh, Ania Boso uh, says thanks a lot for this uh, program tonight I am a student and I really learnt a lot and um, in the program we have a few more minutes to go so i'll i'll take a few more of my set questions from my from my producers so we can we can understand so i mean this one um um says let, let, let me take a party and then i'll come to sami on that it says technology companies don't seem to care much about online bullying and harassment I, I, can they be held responsible and also what responsibilities do social media networks have towards cyber bullying so it, this, this is all uh, jurisdictional, right? I know in the U.S. they are they, they, they held responsible for their you actions. Can't joke there. You cannot joke You cannot joke in the U.S. It's, it's up to governments to ensure that, uh, that these companies are uh, uh, operating in a way that also protects the people. So I, I can speak to what's happening in the U.S. And even by extension, it goes uh, to other parts of the world. Now you look at the big social media platforms, and uh, they have... Uh, measures in place that when when the whole fake news uh, uh, came Facebook took proactive measures to make sure that if they are now verifying information before they post it that they give you tools to report they give you tools to flag information that is not right and all of those things so social media companies uh, it's not like they are not doing anything but the pace the, the rate at which the 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 the, the whole media uh, uh, em environment is moving very fast. It's very fast. So they 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 sometimes they are playing catch up, but for the most part they've uh, uh, availed uh, uh, to users tools to be able to uh, uh, catch some of these things and then report them. And um, somebody wants to know if there are any online anti-bullying tools that <laughs> are available for users. <laughs> Yeah, there are quite a lot. Some are for reporting. You report the case, then they take it up. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the UNICEF website is one good place to yeah. look at because that one is more global. And, but most of the time, you, the sufferer, must look within the local context. Always look within. In Ghana, we can talk of the Cyber Security Authority. 
in other jurisdictions, I know they are supposed to have. So one must ensure that, first of all, the responsibility lies on you, the individual, before it goes to a third party. And also, it, it, it's very important that at all times, we might be mindful of what we post. Always think of what you post before you do that. And there, you will ensure that you are safe, others are also equally safe. And uh, before, before we go, Paddy, how do I prevent my personal information from being used to manipulate or humiliate me on social media? Uh, simple. When, before you put your personal information online, think about it. If, if you don't want someone to have access to your phone number, don't put it on, 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 online. So it, it all comes to the information you're putting out there. If you don't want someone to know your date of birth, don't put it out there. These social media platforms will request some of this information. But in as much as they request it, they also give you the opportunity to set it as to whether it's public or not public. Also, another key thing is to create uh, and keep strong passwords. A lot of people out there, they just will use their boyfriend's name, their, their mom's name, and then add some numbers. Those are all easily guessable. Take time to create passwords and even go beyond passwords and then create pass phrases. So in Ghana, we speak, the, how many languages are, are there in Ghana? A whole lot. If you speak tree, create a pass phrase in tree and then see if someone will be able to hack you or guess that pass phrase to hack into your account. So these are some of the things. Also, back up your accounts. WhatsApp has a way for you to back, back it up on a weekly basis every night. The reason you ought to back up is that when you've backed up and then someone hacks into it, you're able to just wipe it all afresh and then restore from a known good point and then you carry on. You don't lose your messages and then you kick them out of your account, take, take over your account, change your password and go on your merry way. And, and, and it's all about education. It I, is. I, I, yep. I, I tell people every day, why do you want your partner to know your password? I mean. Look, it's not about whether you are doing something or not doing something. Even husbands and wives have issues and they divorce. How much more boyfriend and girlfriend? Mm -hmm. So then there's a problem. The guy wants to leave or the boy, the girl wants to leave. And because he has your password, he goes in there, picks some things, and then begins to use it against you. And then you are shot. I'm saying that even a wife and a husband gets into problems. And before the divorce, there's a lot of acrimony that that password thing can also be a problem. But it is all about education. Look, my eight-year-old daughter will not let me, the father, know what her password is. <laughs> she has protested, said, Daddy, that's my password. And what are you going to say? And I asked the mother, do you know? Say, hey. <laughs> but it is the education. Exactly. Because, you see, exactly. because of the environment in which mm -hmm. they grow up, mm -hmm. they are told so many things. Right, exactly. And they are taught so many yeah, things exactly. that yeah. they know what it means to protect. So right, right, yeah. not letting me know her mm -hmm. password mm -hmm. does not mean that she's doing anything secretive, secretive, secretive yeah. or, or, or untoward. Yeah. You know? yeah. So if you don't let your boyfriend know your password, it doesn't mean that you are cheating on him. So all exactly. these young ladies who then they have some pictures or some information they've mm -hmm. had or some photos or videos that are supposed to be private. Mm -hmm. And then just before the boy will leave, you will copy it onto his phone and then go and splash it out there and then there's trouble. Yeah. Eh, madam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take your password or protect yourself. Don't give yeah. it to anybody. Thank you very much. Uh, Samuel Odoi Laye, adjunct lecturer at the School of Technology, uh, Gimpa here in Accra. He's also chief executive of the Desiderata Information Systems Limited. Thank you very much for uh, your time and Pleasure. for the very educative and insightful information that you've shared with viewers Thank tonight. You. Paddy Wanda is a cybersecurity expert and also has extensive experience in academia, technology, banking, and the finance sectors. And he is um, uh, from the US on holiday in Ghana. And uh, I thank him for truncating uh, his holiday tonight to be with us today. But I'm sure that he's glad with himself because he's impacted a lot of you know, knowledge and uh, information to people out there. And uh, thank you very much, Paddy, Pleasure uh, for mine. joining us on the show. My name is Stan Dugbe. It's a delight always to be with you here on Wazor TV Insights. I'll join you again next week, Monday. But 
you can watch the show again, download it on Facebook or YouTube and watch. And if there are any questions that you have, send them to 055-269-7939 or join a repeat of this program on Wednesday and on Saturday. Thank you very much to my producers, uh, Josephine uh, Gogo and uh, Winziba Ali Apia. And uh, the tech technical production team uh, led by Kweku Frimpon, uh, Al Haji, uh, Stephen, Frank, Osofo Jonas, Kelvin, uh, Ike, and uh, Ni on sounds, and then also uh, photography, Colossus, uh, Francis, Ose, Wusu, and um, uh, uh, our beautiful uh, Beth, who joined us in the studio uh, this evening, and um, our MCR technician, Frank Dumpty. Uh, I thank all of you, and uh, to all those who support what we do here at Wizard TV, Mustafa, uh, security manager at the gate, Mariam, um, administrative uh, manager, uh, Rosemont, uh, an intern from Central University College, who is here with us, and also uh, Sherry Sitchoff, uh, also an intern who is here with us. I thank you all for making Wizard TV what it is today. And uh, we promise you much more exciting uh, programming here on your favorite television station. Good night. I don't look like what I have been through. You turn my pit into a well. So the essence of my praise is centered on your grace. Adum, adum, wadum. I've been through a lot, but grace sustained me. My chest is now a testimony. So the essence of my praise is centered on your grace. Adjum, adjum, adjum. It was you, my lawyer in that courtroom. It was you, my soldier on that battle.